This week, we get a feel for Japan right here at the Anime Experience Convention. And then we get our nerd on at the grand opening of Gods and Monsters. Plus the latest theme park news and more coming at you right, right now. now. show is brought to you by MEI Travel, our preferred travel agent for Disney World, Universal, cruises, and all your vacation planning needs. For a free quote with no obligation, visit MEITravel.com. Undercover Tourist is our recommended supplier of discount tickets to Florida and California theme parks and attractions. For the best deals and planning tips, go to UndercoverTourist.com or find them on Facebook and Twitter. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the show. I'm Banks. And I'm Melissa. So our producers uh, and their family, they were out across the sea. They were abroad in, they uh, were. in London, Paris, on a cruise. The past couple of weeks, they brought us back some stuff. They did, From Yay. Disneyland Paris. Yeah, what do we got in here? Let's see. Oh, Matt, I asked you to bring me back a pin, not a pen. What? Oh, P-I-N instead of P-E? Yeah, no, but I love it. It's great. Oh. <laughs> Oh, there is a pin! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I love the guides here. Uh, there's definitely different shape, and it's both parks for one guide here. I won't open it up because it's a big map, but uh, thank you so much for the Tower of Terror pin and the Tower of Terror Fast Pass. Yay! That's awesome. <laughs> I'll add that to my collection. I for didn't sure. know that Disneyland Paris did Frozen Summer Fun as well. Yeah, I never knew that either until I saw the. Uh, we have video um, of the Frozen Castle show up on our YouTube. There'll be much more videos coming soon to the YouTube channel from Paris, but yeah. Uh, it looks to be a fun park there. Yes, it I does. hope to get out there sometime soon. I know. Oh, that'd be amazing. You know, I, I, there's something I want to ask you about real quick though, because I saw you post a photo on your Facebook. Um, what what was going on uh, with with you and all the Sea World characters? Like, <laughs> this one group photo. I was like, whoa, that's so cool. Yeah, um, we actually did that before the park opened, mm -hmm. so it wasn't for like an event or anything. Um, we wanted to make sure that we could get all of the Shamu and crew characters together Aww. for a group photo. And, and also, my supervisor is leaving this week, so we wanted to get a group photo with him Aww. as well. There was one, I, I can't remember exactly, but there was one character I've never seen before. And I'm like, oh, The I Pelican? Wanna... Yes, the Pelican! That's Virgil. He's okay. old school. He's old school. We don't see him a lot, but he, he came flying in for that photo. I want, I want to meet Virgil. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cool name, Virgil. Virgil, I know. <laughs> He's a cool guy. <laughs> All right, let's get to news in the queue. First up this week, Universal Orlando has announced that after 40 years in operation, Wet n Wild Water Park will be closing its doors. The park, which was bought by Universal Studios in 1998, has operated continuously since opening their doors in 1977. The announcement came on Universal's blog that the park's final day will be December 31st, 2016. With the opening of Universal's new water park, Volcano Bay, set for 2017, the closing of Wet n Wild was not unexpected. No, I've been hearing about this for, for a little while. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, it's what 40 years that's a that's a good run it's for a very a good park. run very good run so we sad to see it go but I'm excited because Universal's new water park looks to be fantastic exactly. Universal does not need two water parks in operation and Volcano Bay is going to be amazing and we'll see what what goes there now where Wet n Wild is yeah I would um I mean I, I, rumors are and I would like to see another hotel like a I, I guess it would be now a four, fifth hotel for, no Sixth hotel, because yeah, yeah, the Sapphire Falls being built is their fifth mm. hotel, so yeah, I'd like to see a sixth hotel maybe. Maybe, we'll yeah. see. Now moving over to Disney now, a new Starbucks location has now opened at Disney's Animal Kingdom. The new location, called Creature Comforts, is located near the bridge to Africa on Discovery Island. Like the Starbucks locations at Magic Kingdom, Epcot, and Hollywood Studios, it features two sides guests can order from. This Starbucks is, so far, the last one scheduled to open in a Walt Disney World theme park. To see even more pictures on the location, check out our blog. I was there uh, going there. I mean, it's it's, it's really nicely themed. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of animal stuff in there. Um, kind of, you know, it just feels like Animal Kingdom. Mm -hmm. It looks really pretty. I like the pictures. And hey, Starbucks in every park now. You can't go wrong. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> they got some special like Animal Kingdom pastries in there as well. Um, is that where the... Is that where the animal no, no, poop is? No, no, no. That's not where that is. That's at the. It's another shop. Something that, that makes you go. What? <laughs> Zuri Sweet Shops. That's over in Harambe. But okay, I didn't know. <laughs> that's a whole another discussion uh, <laughs> itself. But but now you can get all. Um, if you're collecting the You Are Here mugs from Starbucks, now you can get 
All six. All th- four yeah. here at Disney World, two in Disneyland. We'll have to get the Disneyland ones. We'll go in, in, uh, in uh, August. Sorry. Oh, you're I'm, excited. I'm ready to just throw this out <laughs> and get the Starbucks one. Me too. <laughs> and finally this week, Tampa's Museum of Science and Industry is now offering the first public driverless vehicle experience in the nation. Guests to Mosi will be given the opportunity to experience uh, how do you uh, autonomous uh, autonomous auto autonomous no, uh, autonomous vi- driverless vehicle technology such as driverless cars, flying drones, and robotics all summer long. Most the admission, which includes the driverless vehicle demo, is twenty two ninety five per adult. Banks can't talk today. <laughs> it's uh, okay. <laughs> now, uh, this is interesting. This is very this interesting. This is kind of creepy to me. It's like, oh. would you want to sit in a the passenger seat of a driverless car? Uh, honestly. It, it, okay, I'm I'm picturing Jurassic World, like like one of these, but I know that's not yeah, what it yeah. looks like. <laughs> well, even that they were controlling those. That's with true. The thing in the center, so. Wow, I think it would be really. You'll cool be experience. thinking like the first movie with the jeeps. They were, but they right. were on a track. Yeah. This so is not on a track. That's true. This it's is, all computer run. I, I I don't know if I could. Tr- I don't know if I could just trust it. What if something? Well, I, I don't even want to think about it. The technology is there. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I trust it, but I mean, it, it's amazing. It's amazing technology. And you can experience it in Tampa. Cool. Hi, everybody. This week we're in Disney's Hollywood Studios for a hidden Mickey in the Sci Fi Dine In Theater restaurant. Now, there's some great hidden Mickeys in here, but this one is really good. So in the waiting area, on the left wall as you enter, there's a poster for the movie Attack of the 50-Foot Woman. A classic Mickey is behind her right knee, just off the highway. And when, you've, when we see it, show everybody in the waiting room this hidden Mickey. It's a good one. So Elisa, how much do you know about anime? That's the Japanese animation style, right? Yeah. I actually know very little about it. Well, did you know that there's actually a yearly anime convention in Florida? I definitely did not. Neither did we, but we sent Quinn to check out the Florida Anime Experience and see what it was all about. I'm here at the Florida Anime Experience with my friend Echo, and I know nothing about anime, so I brought her along. Now, Echo, what are you dressed as today? I am dressed as Ken Makozumi from Haikyuu. All right, I have no idea what that is, and um, I guess let's go look around, okay? All right. have no idea what is anime shiny shiny cartoons now uh, anime is Japanese animated entertainment um, so it, it can extend sometimes into Asian because they'll say Chinese but it's predominantly Japanese animated entertainment um, characterize a lot of the there's a lot of consistent things that are characterized giant robots girls with big eyes magical girls with magical abilities so there's a lot of it's like what's sci-fi well there's usually always a hero with a laser gun you know there's certain tropes but it's if you had to boil it down to simple it's japanese animated entertainment and the culture it spawns so why do you think everyone likes anime so much i think anime is more popular now because there's two groups that attracts one attracts a young audience because younger people like anything that has sort of a a theme of independence and rebellion. And a lot of anime is based on, you know, post-apocalyptic or struggle against something. So it's just like uh, the other thing that's popular is teenagers love vampires. When I was a teenager, I loved Interview with a Vampire. It's that sense of independence and you can link yourself to it. So anime is popular with teenagers. With people my age, more adults, we remember an era where everything wasn't a CG animated show and hand-drawn animation and cartoons were a thing. I miss Saturday morning cartoons growing up. And the only like mass marketed and still around hand-drawn animation industry is out of Japan that still comes over to America. So it's something for everybody. And the best way I describe, I mean, everybody's an anime fan. They just don't know it yet. It's like ice cream. I'm pretty sure almost everyone, unless you're lactose intolerant, everybody likes ice cream. You just have to find what flavor you like. And that's what anime is. What do you like about anime? 
Well, the thing that I like about anime the most is that there's so many different genres that you can pick from. So even if you're into like the girly stuff, the more shonen stuff, the bloody stuff, the cute stuff, there's something for everybody. So you can't really go wrong with it. The characters can be easy to relate to and it just everything about it just makes me love it. It's just it's really hard to pinpoint anything certain. I guess I like it where it has the plot, like instead of cartoons, it actually has like a steady thing that, kind of like Attack on Titan, it's about a boy who saw his mother get eaten by titans that are slowly destroying everything, and he's vowed to join the military to get revenge, kill all the titans just to find out he's a titan himself. It's stuff like that. It's not just episode to episode can be its own story. And it brings a lot of people together. Like, even through these conventions, I've made over 100 friends, and I see them every year. I like that you can watch any kind of anime, no matter what your taste is. It could be silly, it could be serious, it could be drama, it could be lovey-dovey romance, it could be any kind of thing you like about it. Just how fun it is, how abrasive. <laughs> it's really easy to relate to characters, you can lose yourself into some of the fantasy, and it's just really fun. For me, it's a lot of nostalgia. Uh, Car Captor Sakura came out in the early 2000s, and my other favorite is Sailor Moon from 1990s. So it's a connection back to my childhood and actually getting to live out the childhood dream. What is it? What is it from? Well, um, there's Hama from Madoka Magica. I'm cosplaying something from this. It's Haikyuu, Old Kaiwa, uh, Eve from Eve. It's a video game. Uh, this is from Steven's Universe. Kuroko from Kuroko's Basketball. We've asked everyone else, but what is it about anime that you like? Oh, I have to think that anime is an acquired taste. You either like it or you don't. I know that some people don't seem to like it because they don't like the style. I personally like it because it gives me a nostalgia feeling since I've watched it since I was very young. Well, there you have it. Visit FloridaAnime.com to check out their future events. The next time you plan a Disney vacation, book with a travel agency that's been specifically designated as an authorized Disney vacation planner. Unlike some other agencies, many of our agents' exclusive knowledge of Walt Disney World can help you get the most out of your vacation, and the assistance of our travel professionals can help you get a customized Disney vacation that's just right for you, your family, and your budget. Start planning your magical vacation today by visiting mousefantravel.com. So Quinn got to do something nerdy for this week's show. Are you jealous? Well, a little, but not entirely. Why not? Well, you see, Andy got to go check out the grand opening of Gods and Monsters at Argon Marketplace, and guess who tagged along to film it? Oh, so what you're saying is all you guys nerded out this week. We sure did. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at what you guys geeked out at. We're here today at Artagon Marketplace for the grand opening of Gods and Monsters. It's supposed to be the second largest comic book, collectible, toy, gaming store in America. I cannot wait for this. What is Gods and Monsters? What is Gods and Monsters? We are one of the largest uh, comic book and toy and gaming venues in the world. Uh, we've just opened uh, our doors today uh, on International Drive in Orlando, Florida uh, at the Artagon Marketplace. Uh, it's, well, look around. I mean, this, this is Gods and Monsters. So what kind of stuff can our viewers expect to find here exactly? Well, as we grow, you're going to see more comics and toys. Uh, we've got a huge gaming lounge, the Offworld Lounge, uh, the uh, Transmetropolitan Gallery, our, our, uh, our pop culture art gallery. 
Uh, all this stuff will grow in time, uh, but I think we've got a we've got a pretty good uh, look. Look at this. Come on, that's that's amazing. Uh, we we hope to be a, a hub of of geek and nerd culture uh, for the world over. That's why we chose International Drive was to kind of tie into the tourist industry, bring in those Brazilians and those Europeans and, uh, and show, them, uh, show them what a good time we can, we can do. We've got a fantastic crew of, of fabricators and artists and cosplay, cosplayers and uh, everybody in the community has been so, so supportive leading up to this. But uh, yeah, we hope to be a hub for, uh, for nerd culture. We were looking around. I mean, one of the things your scenic decor. I mean, these, sure. this thing looks incredible. How did you get all this done? <laughs> well, like like I said, one of our uh, one of our main gets uh, with my crew was uh, some of them were fabricators from like Universal Studios and Disney, and they were just giving us their time. I would be like, let you know what what do you, what do you want? And they're just like, just feed us. It's cool. We want to make your sign for you. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, like I said, the the groundswell of support for this project has been. Amazing, it's like really humbling because you know we came in wanting to wanting to do something cool, but it's become some other creature along the way, and it's really due to my crew, uh, the fabricators and artists that helped us along the way. Last one, uh, what is it like being here in Artagon? I know this marketplace has a lot of different stuff going on here. Yeah, we were really uh, intrigued by what Artagon was doing with the uh, with uh, them rebuilding and uh, kind of rebranding themselves over the past uh, year. And uh, we wanted to be a part of that. We, we really liked the, the idea of them bringing in local artists and kind of giving them a, a venue uh, through which to, I don't know, express their art live. We, we thought that that would be a great fit for us. And since there's a lot of, you know, nerd culture artists out there, we thought it would just be a really awesome synergy. look at gods and monsters here at the Artagon Marketplace. Now, I don't know how well it came across on the video, but it looks amazing in there. The scenic design and the elements on the wall easily rival anything you find in a theme park. If you want to check it out, it's open every day here at the Artagon Marketplace, just down the street from Fun Spot. We've talked before about the massive amount of walking you'll be doing when you come down to visit the parks. Start preparing your family now by taking walks around your local community parks together. If you begin a few weeks before your trip, you can slowly ramp up the length of your walks as you get closer to leaving. When you finally make it to Florida, hiking around the parks will be no problem at all. Skip the lines with undercover tourists, crowd calendars, touring plans, and mobile apps. Stop paying full price for your family vacation and visit Undercover Tours today. 
Now let's take a look at this week's calendar. First, Summer Nights at SeaWorld is continuing this week. On Saturday, you'll have a chance to see Crystal Gale, and on Sunday, you can see Phil Vassar live in concert. Over at Epcot, you can still check out the Sounds Like Summer concert series. Through Friday, you can see Mike Delgidis and Big Shot, a tribute Billy Joel show. Starting on Saturday, you can catch Don't Look Back, a tribute to Boston. And finally, on Saturday and Sunday, you can go see Walker Stalker Con at the Orange County Convention Center. Remember, you can subscribe to our calendar at attractionsmagazine.com to stay up to date on these events and more. And now we want to thank Emmy I Travel, our preferred travel agent for cruises, Disney World, Universal, and all your other vacation planning needs. For a free quote with no obligation, visit MEITravel.com. And much thanks to Undercover Tourist, our recommended supplier of discount tickets to Orlando and California attractions. For more information, visit UndercoverTourist.com. Remember, you can watch a brand new episode of the show each week on YouTube, Bright House Channel 999, iTunes, and through the O-Town app on Roku and Amazon Fire. You can also visit AttractionsMagazine.com for news and videos throughout the week. If you enjoy our show, please support it by subscribing to our magazine through our website, in our app or on the Nook. Our summer issue is now available for pre-purchase through our website. The issue will get you up to date on all the new things at iDrive 360 and much, much more. All right, so a couple of personal birthdays we want to get yeah, out Yeah, I wanted to say, and we wanted to say, happy birthday to Jackie, our producer. Yay, I'm she, glad that you got to be on vacation. Yeah, she got to celebrate overseas yeah, on a cruise. That's, that's awesome. Amazing. And I got to say happy birthday to my mom. She turns... Um, an age. Uh, I don't want to give. <laughs> shouldn't age. give it away. Uh, she turned. So her birthday is today, the June twenty fifth. So happy birthday! I'm excited for her, and uh, she's going to be coming down next month. She's going to be here for a couple days for Spencer's birthday next Aww. month. So I'm excited to see her. Very nice. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope you'll tune in again next week. Until then, visit your local attractions, try something new, stay safe, but most of all, have, have fun. fun. Florida Anime Experience, and I <laughs> and uh, rolling. Uh, let me um. Jeez, be prepared. Jeez, be prepared next time. Like, be prepared. And if you'd like to take a look at their events in the future, you can. I can mess up. I can mess up. Thanks. <laughs> Wet n Wild Water Park will be closing its doors. I've just spaced out. <laughs> you okay? I've spaced out. First, Summer Nights is continuing at SeaWorld. Okay. Yes, it is. <laughs> I recorded that. <laughs> Our preferred travel... <coughs> so oh, sorry. <laughs> wow. That came from nowhere. <laughs> I thought you were going to throw up. <laughs>